kit talk part two edc kits what is the truth okay let's get into this firstly your edc kit is designed for you by you for you don't be tricked into buying an edc kit online that has got a load of gear you're going to bin and it's going to cost you a lot of money build the kit to suit you and your requirements based on your lifestyle, where you are, who you are, what you need, what you carry. This is just my EDC kit. This is what I carry with me on a daily basis. And if it's an EDC kit, it's an everyday carry. Think practically about it. It's not a survival bag, okay? That's in the car, that's at home, that's in your rucksack, okay? This is an everyday carry. These are the things you're going to need on a daily basis. It starts quite simply for me. I wake up, I get up, first thing I put on is this, and on this I have a backup for a seam rod, I have a whistle, I have a small light, and I have a dog tag. That dog tag has my details on it. So in the event of an emergency or I'm found unconscious, my details are on there. All goes underneath my t-shirt, discreet, I can wear a shirt, tie over the top of it. Makes it nice, tucks away out the way. And again, that's part of the thing with the EDC. Try and make it a little bit discreet, okay? Doesn't need to stand out. Don't need to be wearing loads of webbing and combat gear. My next item that I'll always think about is going to be my Leatherman. Now, I carry the Leatherman Wave. After many years of trying many different Leathermans, I find this one's a sensible weight. Works for me. That goes into a pouch on my belt. If I'm going somewhere that I cannot legally carry it, Okay, I'll either leave it in the car so it's there when I come back to the car, or I might speak to security and hand it over to them. Now, I recently had to do that in a law court where I'd sign up for some documents, went in, spoke to security, yeah, no problem, mate, signed it over to them, picked it up on the way out. They liked it because I was honest and decent to them. If I'd gone through the metal detector, I would have probably lost it. Okay, so that's my Leatherman. Next thing that you can always have with you is your keys, whether it's your house keys and your car keys, you're going to have them with you. There's a couple of items on there of importance. I have a small Victoria Knox pen knife there that has a toothpick, a small blade, a nail file, and a pair of tweezers, all of which I use quite regularly, okay? It has a small torch on it because it's my car keys, okay? I might have to, <laughs> I might drop something, I might need something, but it's just a small reliable torch. It's not particularly powerful, but it's enough to see what I'm doing by. Okay. An in-vehicle rescue tool. So it has a window breaker and a seatbelt cutter. Quite simple, quite cheap, quite affordable. Goes on there. Yeah, it's there when I need it. And most importantly on this is a picture of my granddaughter. Okay, morale. Very, very important in a tricky or difficult situation. If I find myself really ebbing, I can look at her for a few minutes and that will give me the will, the strength, the want to push on. Next bit of kit that everybody's going to carry is your mobile phone. Okay, mobile, mobile phones are awesome. They've got a torch on them. Okay, I've got backup torch in my system, or I've got a main torch in my system. I try not to use the torch on my phone. One, they're not particularly good. Two, drain some power from the uh, mobile phone, and I might need to save that. The other thing to bear in mind with mobile phones is they're fallible, they break. Okay. They break, they fail, they let you down, you can't get a signal, you sit on it, stand up, whatever, right? It's a system that is quite delicate and can fail you, okay? Worth having, we all carry them all the time, don't rely on it, okay? So, next bit of kit is actually my pouch, okay? What do I carry in my pouch? I'm going to whiz through this because I only want these to be short videos, but this idea of this pouch is small, light and efficient. It's got a molly system on it, so it can be carried on my belt. It can go into pretty much any pocket in a gillet, jacket, or into my trousers, okay? And it can be carried with me every single day. So in there, bring this forward first of all, there's a needle there, and the needle's tucked in, so at the point of the needle's behind the Velcro there, it's not gonna poke me in the finger. It's not gonna become an issue. That's quite important to me. <laughs> so a needle. You can sew things, repair things, but more importantly for me, I can take splinters out, okay? If I pick up a splinter or a thorn, 
I've got something that I can use to remove it. And I can hear the medic screaming and shouting, you're not supposed to do that, Mick. No, but if I've got a two hour walk home and I've got a big old splinter or thorn in my foot, I can dig it out, clean up the wound, sterilize it as best I can, and go home, okay? So, a needle. It's a great bit of kit, simple bit of kit to carry with you. Yeah, and for me, it works. Next bit of kit out is, or the first bit of kit out, is probably the most commonly used for me. It's a bit of gaffer tape. Now, this is my plaster system, okay? And I also use it for repairing things. Holes in my tarp, holes in my tent, fixing bits and pieces around the car, on the car. And why is it a plaster system? Well, because most plasters are a pain in the arse. The greater hope, however, they get wet, they get dirty, they fall off. That will protect a wound. You clean the wound, put that over it, it will look after it till you can get home and sort it out further. Okay, next bit of kit out, head torch. Okay, now, I've gone over to this small um, Trustfire MT15 head torch. The reason I've gone over to this is I used to carry an Ebo, which as you can see is a bit heavier, it's a bit larger. Both the same sort of power. Now the Ebo, still love it, it's gone into a survival kit, but that makes a nice discreet small EDC, everyday carry. It's small, light, strong enough to be something with you every day. As you see, I've taken the strap off of it. The strap is carried in a separate pouch there, so if I'm going away, I'm going to do something where I'm going to want a head torch. I know I'm going to need it. I've got the strap with me. There's also a backup headlight in there. This headlight, if I need to when I'm out, if I want to use it as a headlight, I can either clip it onto a, a cap, or if I need to, I can clip it onto my spectacles, like that. I use it as a headlight. But the majority of the time, I want it just to be small, light and efficient in that pack with me when I need it. So that's my light system. Next item out is a notepad and a pen. Right? Quite simply, I'm forgetful. Okay? We all are. We all get given information all the time and forget what we're saying. We haven't always got the ability to stick it in our phone, go into the notepad on the phone, type it all down and out, or your phone might not be working. I tend to rely on this. Good old fashioned system. Need Pop round to see Mac, he's not in, leave a note, Mac, pop round at three o'clock, gone up to so and so, catch you tomorrow mate, Mick, yeah? Somebody gives me their phone number, <coughs> their email address, their YouTube channel, I suddenly need to make notes, I think, oh, this pillbox, where are we? Oh, grid references, grid references, such and such, such, an idea for a, a video, oh, quick note there, okay? So notepad and pen, simple thing to carry, and this pen, is a metal, all metal pen, it's titanium, and it's got a window breaker on the end. So it's got many, many uses, whether it might be breaking glass in an emergency, maybe I might need to use it as a defence tool, okay? That's why I carry that in there. And again, it's carried in a pack. It's not a go-to weapon, but it's something I've got if I need it. Next piece of kit out, okay? So one bit of kit I never want to use. I never want to have to take this bit of kit out, but I carry it with me primarily because if you need it, you need it, okay? And that is my cat tourniquet. That lives in there. Now, I, know, I hope never to have to use one of these again, but if you do, it's there. And the reason that I have the cat tourniquet rather than going with an improvised system like a belt, boot lace or whatever, is quite simple, time. If I'm bleeding out, or somebody else is bleeding out, it's about time. It's about getting it on fast and efficiently, okay? Next item out, first aid item, field dressing, okay? Unpacked, not sterilised, quite aware of that. However, the idea being, again, I can get it on quickly, cleanly, by myself, one-handed if I had to, and I can always sterilise, sort out the wound at a later date. But my priority would be controlling bleeding. This is a thing that's going to kill you, get it dealt with fast, and then you can look at what you're going to do beyond that. Priority item, okay, cigarette lighter. Always, always have a cigarette lighter with you. Greg Evans, Rocky Mountain Bushcraft, 
okay it's just done a great video where it's gone out and survived with just that just that one tool it's great to have all your prepping your bushcraft techniques and everything else i love them i practice them all the time i've got a backup ferrocene rod there however if it's a genuine emergency situation you don't want to be faffing about all right cigarette lighter and in the event that somebody wants to light a cigarette it's a lot easier to do it than it is to do it with your ferrocene rod <laughs> so again i carry that also in the kit aspirins aspirin's my go-to pain reliever okay great for bringing a fever down the other thing is i'm a man of a certain age okay aspirin if you have somebody that's having a heart condition or you think they're having a heart condition get aspirin into them okay this is going to help it's going to help a lot first thing a paramedic are doing they're dealing with a heart attack aspirin so always carry a pack of aspirin with you it's a great bit of kit to have the other bit of kit in there alongside that is a tube of glucogel now i'm not diabetic okay i have friends that are but also for my own use in the event that i feel I'm running down okay if you have a high stress situation or you've suddenly walked too far or you've dealt with a medical situation shock stress strain will take it out of your body you've suddenly used that adrenaline you've used up all those sugars you're now going to hit the wall if you've got something to replace that that's going to give you that little bit of help for that last little bit that's just going to give you that little boost to keep you going so I keep one of those in there great bit of kit recommend it to everybody and also, the bottom of the kit, last but not least, is this. And this here is quite simply some fishing braid. Okay, This is braided line. Now, I can use this in conjunction with the needle for repairing kit, equipment. I've doubled it up for now and made a temporary boot lace out of it. It's a £40 breaking strain, so doubled up is £80. You can use it for tying things off, making snares. It's got 101 uses, small, discreet, out the way, and in my pack. You could also use things like dental floss, but dental floss doesn't send a last long, and it's not quite as strong as this stuff. Okay, so that is my EDC pack. Alongside that, also, depending on where I'm going, if I'm going to be out for the day, um, so I'm travelling up to London for a meeting or, or maybe I'm just out and about, I carry that. And that is a small tin of meds. And within that, I've got antihistamines, I've got ibuprofen, I've got lothramide. So I've got, I can control diarrhoea, I can sort out pain, I can sort out allergies, okay, which I do have a few. I've also got some Gaviscon in there. So if you've got a bit of an acid reflux issue, that's it. And that's more about comfort than anything else, but it's a nice little discreet backup that you can just literally stick in a pocket, or if you've got room, put it inside the kit, carry it with you. There we go. It's not always, always, if I'm just going shopping or something, I don't carry it, but if I'm going out for the day, it'll go with me. Now, you can supplement this kit, build it to suit yourself. These are just a few things I carry with me on a daily basis, because quite often I find I need them. On top of that kit, I've got bags in the car, so I've got an in-car in survival kit. I might be going out on an adventure, so I carry a kit with me for the day. I build that for what I require for the day. If I was doing a long-term trek, obviously I'd build that to so suit that. But I would still carry this EDC kit in my pocket. It's the foundation of my gear, okay? Everybody should carry one of these. But everybody should build it to what they need. Everybody is different. Now, you may be somebody, and I'm, I know somebody's going to come back and say it on the video, so I'll get in there first. Yes, if I lived in a country where it was legal to, where I had a threat from animals, or maybe a threat from other people, I would carry a sidearm. Yeah, that would be part of my EDC kit. Yeah, I would carry a sidearm if it was somewhere where it was legal and I required it. However, in the UK, it's not legal and I don't require it. I've got no predatory animals, and I've got no threat I can't deal with myself, okay? So, build your EDC kit for what you need. Don't be, tri I've, I've just got a bit fed up with seeing a lot of big companies advertising their EDC kits. Some of them are very good, 
but you need to build it around what you need. So build your own. I'm not saying don't go and buy an EDC kit. If you see one that you think is good quality, or if there's anybody out there that builds an EDC kit that goes, no, Mickey, you're wrong, we're sending you this, see what you think. I'm prepared to give it a go. But you need to base it around your requirements and needs. Okay? That is the priority. Anyhow, that's my thoughts on EDC, EDC kits. Get hold of me. Tell me what you think. Send us a comment. Give me your views. Tell me what you think about the EDC kit. What could I add to this that would improve it? What would you add to it to improve it for you where you live? And what might you take out? What might you turn around and say, do you know what? I wouldn't carry that because I don't need it. All right? But again, it's about having to think about what you need. Anyhow, this is Mickey, Hampshire Outdoors and Survival. This is EDC Kits. This is Kit Talk Part 2. On Kit Talk Part 3, we're going to cover my in-car kit and survival kits. This is Mickey, Hampshire Outdoors and Survival. Love those you do, forgive those you don't, and as always, peace and light be upon you all. Have a great time wherever you are. Mickey out.